go ahead. I am going to share a link that uh, works. And uh, about it's some of the work that Matt Snell did. Okay. Who actually, he and I coordinated on this uh, quite a lot over the weekend and last week. And it's, um, it's working on one instance of our system and not another. They're exactly the same. So I, th I think it's just a database thing that he's done differently. Okay. Um, but I'll give you this link. This link's not working for me. And it's an example of just one, and I'll share my screen here when I do that as well. So you can browse on your own or see my screen. Okay. I see it, but yep. All right. So uh, what Matt's done is for, there's a group of uh, 45 or so repos that are part of this effort project. And there's a larger group of repos that are in a test instance of Augur that he's run uh, Augur, you know, Augur SBOM over. And I, in there, he's showing a couple of really, I think, important and interesting pieces of information. One is a count of forks by week, which this looks to me like it just might be wrong. Um, like maybe he's using the wrong endpoint because I doubt it's that low. Um, or he might not, we might not have repo info. Actually, that comes from a table that we might have populated in this database yet. Um, and then there's committers by week, which you can just see the number of people who are committing each week from 2015 through. 2019 current time. And then he's done a scanner that shows all the different licenses that are declared inside the project we're looking at, which is set for RTOS stepper. Shows the total number of forks is 1,442. And it shows that its current status is CII best practices gold. And that that status was last updated at the Linux Foundation on February 16th of 2019. That's nice. Yep. And there's a nice link to the best practices website, which I won't um, hire us with. Uh, the other thing that he's done that is really great is he's created a link for downloading a JSON version of the SBOM itself. So, not sure. Uh, I'm just going to open with. It's, uh, I'm going to share, I'm going to share a different screen just because JSON is a lot more viewable in Firefox than it is in, in uh, Chrome. You just want to show that JSON file? Well, yeah, but I want to show it in a way that's sort of readable for people. Um, and Firefox just does a much better job of, of doing that. Okay. Uh, Chrome just shows the raw JSON structure. So you can see, so this is the idea of the scan and then the idea of the repo in our system. And it says total number of files, license, declared license files. There's 73% license coverage in here. And then this is uh Wait, scroll up again. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. Uh, and then there's some license information I don't think that what I have right now, he, what, he was going to provide an inventory of files, I think. But we have, we have a, a good deal of information about licenses, creation packages, and other basic SBOM, SPDX data that's in this, in this file that can be downloaded uh, directly from Augur. So is that so, is that SBOM? Is it following SPDX? It is supposed to be an SPDX SBOM. Yes, it is. Okay. But, but one of the things that Matt and I have discussed, and he just may not have gotten to it yet, is including like there's a, there was a full file that actually listed everything, including the contents of the package, like the directory by directory contents. Mm -hmm. so basically, everything except relations. And this is, this is like a lot. So it's, I think it's a lot of useful information. Yeah, the relationships, I don't think those even need to be there. No, be but, but I think, and this is one of the questions that we had for, for Jessica and 
Kate when they were not, when we missed them last time is that I, I think in the conversations I've had with them, we talked about it, including more things, but I'm sure I'd get their feedback on that. Um, so maybe I'll just uh, send Kate a link, send them both away yeah. to the thing that works. And, um, go from there. I think so too. And I think they're probably going to care tremendously about how much that document lines Sorry. up. That, those specifications that I just put in the chat. And this, yeah, so the specifications, these, I don't know the extent to which, I mean, my understand you you know more than I is the intent of the original USAC software was to provide a compliant document to these specifications, yeah. right? So yep. um I my sort of expectation is that that, that is the case. Um, yeah, the only reason it wouldn't be the case is if there were kind of changes that were being made to get it to work in Augur. I can't imagine how those would be related, but there shouldn't be because I mean, really, literally, there's a, a database we use is Postgres, and it has a JSON data type. So he's literally storing a JSON output from Augur SBOM, or what was formerly called DSOX. Okay. In that field, the only thing I can think of is perhaps he hasn't yet completed the act of, of making the entire SBOM uh, JSON. Jsonified. Okay. And I would need to talk to Matt uh, about that. Okay, I can talk to him. I might see him this afternoon. I can yeah. Talk to him yeah, share this link with him. This this one's working and I have to talk to him about Can you put that link in the, the meeting? That link? Yeah, I have that link. Okay. Yeah. I this thought... link. There's a Zephyr, it's actually a Zephyr instance, but for some reason uh and it, it's he and I just have to talk. I don't know where he's pulling the data from. Okay. I don't. I don't know that. Uh, yeah. I, I just. He and I just have to talk because I think. Yeah. I'm. I'm sure there's just something, someplace he's put the data, and I don't know where. That that is not in our database where it's expecting it to be. So. Okay. We'll figure that out. Okay. Well, that looks cool. It's good stuff on there. Yeah. Um, I'm with you though. The forks by week looks funny when you see 1,442 forks. Yeah, no, I think I think there's a. I know where that data comes from, and I think I suspect we just don't have the historical data gathered in that database. Um, yet I can look. Okay. Afterwards, but that yeah, Matt Snell and I just need to set up a time to sort of figure out what's going on there. Okay. Why it's not working on a separate specific site. Which talks to a different database and it's only got the separate repos in it. Um, I'm kind of curious. So if I look at the risk metrics in the release, this is under business? No, elephant factor committers, test coverage, license count. Okay, so this license count is in here? Yep. I think SBOM, SBOM is a metric that we released. Yeah, well, so actually license count, license coverage, licenses declared, and bill of materials. So you have four of them in here. In the in the file that we're showing? Or in just in this interface that you're showing right here. So I mean, like, you have license count on this page, don't you? Yep, uh, we have license coverage. Uh, license is declared. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is license count? I, I think we have an enumeration of all of the declared licenses. Yeah, how many which, different licenses? There I are. suppose we could count that number. <laughs> I think and, this uh, is, we had this conversation earlier when I'm like, what's the utility in license count? But it's there now. Is so it a, it's, it's not a discrete field, it's just a list, right? No, it would just be like, see that short name under licenses declared? Yeah. We would be counting those. Yeah, okay, right. That's what I thought. Okay. And then bill of material. All right, so um, cool. He's, he made a ton of progress, and it's it's all in Augur now. He and I have to sort of sort out deployment. 
stuff. Okay. So like, why does it work on one instance? We should probably, I mean, as far as a, a metric goes, we should probably release, makes me think for the risk group moving forward, articulate on transparency, the best practices. Tell me more about what you mean by that. Like, well, so like if I give you this list right here, right? The actual metrics. Oops, hold on. Right. I'm trying to copy the link and share it. In my, am I no longer sharing a window? Uh, you are still sharing a window. Is it the, are you? I see your auger. Oh. Auger thing and now a really big mm, cursor. Okay, sorry, I was in the wrong. I was also looking at it, but in a different browser, and I didn't see the green border around it. So I was like, am I sharing something? So if we look at this, actually, you provide committers too. Mm -hmm. So you're actually hitting committers, license count, license coverage, license yep. declared. Yep, and then transparency. You actually, that's scroll down. The little materials, yeah. So I was just saying that looking at your interface too, the Augur interface, mm -hmm. under transparency, if you go back to the metrics. Uh, here, I think I'm showing you the metrics now, am I? No, no, click on the metrics tab up at the top of this browser. This one there. There you go. So under transparency, I yes. think under bill of materials, we should have CII badge. Nope, go back, go, go back. Oh, I see. We should add a met. We should add the CII badge as a, as metric. a metric. I agree for providing transparency. Like you've already done the work. It's kind of yeah. like what um, what Don is ask asking you to do with Common. Right. Like we, it's already done. So we yeah. Might. And I actually think um, we have. I think. Is there I think I think with the case of badging, uh -huh. we we didn't. We wanted to have a convert still. I think we have a, a pretty good, I'm trying to remember. I think we did a draft of it. Okay. We didn't release it because we hadn't had a chance to talk with, uh, Dave, is it Dave Walker? Wheeler. Wheeler, Dave Wheeler. Um, and we wanted to, um, there we wanted to, yeah, okay. we, we didn't write it up. And, but we chose not to write it up because we wouldn't, we weren't able to circle back with Dave before Okay. Before well, the release. And that should be, I think this should be on the, I'm going to put a note if you don't mind. Like put this, this is, on the roadmap. Yeah, this should be the, if I was to make a list of metrics in risk that are, should be on the roadmap, certainly best CI, best practices should be there. Um, Tom, what else do you think? Like if you're looking at this list, are there others that are, that you think would be good to make sure that we have Sort of as part of the next release, because there's, I mean, there's a lot actually, like uh, lines of code, uh, issue average or resolution time, issue open age, any of the issue volumes, declared light. A lot of these we can actually we already have the data for. Yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> I'd have to go through and and look at. Yeah, I mean, them. many of them don't have definitions Maybe. yet. But I think I think we can go through and write up a lot of these. So let me ask right. you, um, can you yeah. on the auger roadmap is yeah. alpha factor on there? Yeah. It, it you know, uh, I think go back and look at that document. On the auger. Because I'm just thinking, I mean, if you would be the first working group I think that would have one to one mapping straight correlation between what the work group, what the work group um, puts forward as metrics and what the tooling can deploy. You know what I mean? Which would be pretty cool. Yeah, which would be pretty cool. And then you would add CII, which you already have deployed. <laughs> and then. So just look and see if elephant factors on there. In the. Augur roadmap. Yeah. I'm, I'm look, uh... I'm looking at it right now. I don't have the word elephant factor okay. on it, but uh, I think there are, are places where. Um, 
where you measure the distribution, right? Essentially of the work. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, we have measured elephant factor, and I think we haven't deployed it yet. Because, but yeah, elephant factor. I'll just add elephant factor. I'm going to add all risk metrics. Well, that would also include test coverage. Yeah, there's test coverage, and there's another testing one too. In terms of the test coverage was released by the risk working group in version one of the metrics. So uh, test coverage. And there was, there was there's another one that had test in it, wasn't there? Mm, maybe. Test coverage. I don't see anything. Maybe I, I guess code complexity is uh, is one, but we can actually do that one. So, what in terms of your Sean, when you're looking at this list for you? Yeah. Are there any in kind of in the Augur space that appear to be more deployable than others? Yeah. I, so anything related to issues or code or code complexity, we have to finish and lines of code that we're working on that worker right now that will gather that data. Oh, well, let's just put, let's put those two on the, if you are, I mean. And I, then anything related to issues, we have endpoints that, you know, I would have to check what the endpoint does, but we can have and the language declared is available. The language source proportion is a GitHub API call. Um, so there's a number of these that can be okay. added. I mean, maybe an aim. When is the next metrics release? Is, or is it Osdem? Yeah. And so when does the draft do on that? First of the year. Oh, okay. So um, basically map all these other metrics if I was to. Yeah, when I would, I, I just, in my list, in the list here, I put three, just starting with three. So on the, the met on the Augur roadmap is elephant factor and test coverage. Yep, and I added code complexity because that comes for free. Okay. Is there another one that you wanted in there too? Well, I put lines of code. Okay, lines of code. I mean, that's. If we get code complexity, we get lines of code. Yep. And so I'm thinking, can you see that document, the working document? Um, the, Google Doc. the Google Doc. Uh, there, I just put it in the chat again. Yes. OK. So this is completed in Augur. Yep. And um, this is metric with no implementation. Yep. These yeah. three here at the bottom are on our roadmap. And then well, lines, of, lines of code and code complexity. Actually, all the ones remaining on your list are in that, in that uh, Go worker that we're working on. OK. So I guess the way I'm trying to write this, whoops, is that these ones that are italics, yeah, they need to have a metric written for them and be deployed in Augur, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they appear in both lists, right? Mm -hmm. And then there needs to be a metric made for the CII best practice, best practice badge because it's already completed in Augur. Yeah, and there's, well, there's a, we've listed it as a metric to build it, but we've done no work on it. So if I was to think of, um, is, I, oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So code complexity lines of code are not defined, but yeah. they should be, and the CI best practices badge should also be in the, yep, in the next metrics release. Yeah, I'm completely, completely on board with that. So then for the version two, it would include three new metrics. Right. And the hope would be is that all of them are actually deployed in Augur. Yeah. That'd be cool. I, I 
think that's entirely likely. Okay. It's quite quite likely actually. All right. Um, I'm going to drop off. I have a meeting at 1:30. Yeah, I do too. Tom, is there anything that you wanted to add today? Look, looking at the metrics, I was just curious if you guys had any plans to look at um, like mean time to repair if a CV is identified um, for an open source project. So from the time that the vulnerability is identified to the time that the project's repaired, um, I didn't know if that, that, that's not that's, an easy metric to come by, but I didn't know if you guys had plans to look at that. The, the issue open age is kind of our proxy for that. So an okay. open source, when someone opens an issue, how long it takes that issue to get closed is a proxy for mean time to repair. I think the question is, are there, are there things in open source projects that have to be repaired but never make it to an issue? I think so. Um, and those are things, of course, that are external. We would never but that doesn't access. necessarily point to a published vulnerability. No. Right, right. No. The, the, yeah, the publishable vulnerabilities are the It'd other. Be nice. It'd be nice if the you could do a, a scan of the issue text to see if there's pointing to the NIST database. You know, like somebody's like, here is the published vulnerability. Yeah. And then you can write. Well, yeah. and... GitHub's getting better and better at making vulnerabilities visible to us. And not they are, that. and and I, and I think they auto open issues now too, depending on the the tool set. Um, you can have it auto open CVE issues from this, but yeah, I like we, yeah. We have Dependabot, and we use it keeps our requirements files and everything up to date. Like any security vulnerabilities that make it to GitHub, we immediately get a pull request. We get a we get open. I can't remember if it open. It gives us. I think it does open an issue. Yeah, it opens an issue, and then it gives me a button I can click to create a pull request to fix that. Yep. And yep. You, usually it's not, usually it's just literally updating one line in a required library file. Right, yeah, just updating the version. Why don't typically. we, maybe we can, because okay. we'd have to, I really have to we go. We have to go, yeah. Yep. Um, no, yep. what, what yep. I was gonna say is maybe we, let me, um, for the next meeting, let's, I'll take a look at, we can look at what might be available for that, okay. for that comment, and we could talk about this next time. Yeah, we'll all right. Agenda for next time. I put it on the doc. Kind of the mean timer to repair. Okay, cool. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we'll okay. see you in a couple weeks. See you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.